Good morning. I'm Dr. Harriet Vanceball, cardiologist and associate professor of medicine at McMaster University in Canada. We are in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic, which has had an unparalleled burden of disease in recent history. Uh, there has been a tremendous toll globally, but infection and mortality rates have varied across countries. In South Korea, for example, as of this week, there have been 10,000 reported cases with approximately 155 deaths, equating to a mortality rate of about 1.6%. In contrast, in Italy, there have been about 102,000 reported cases with 11,600 deaths, equating to a mortality rate of 11.4%. While some of these differences in mortality have been attributed to the different demographics affected by COVID-19, so older patient groups in Italy and younger groups in South Korea, uh, these differences in mortality may also be a function of the degree of screening, of healthcare policy, and of course, of local practices. I'm here today to discuss some of these differences with Dr. Park, Professor of Interventional Cardiology from the Asan Medical Center in Seoul, South Korea, and with Dr. Seni, who is the Director of Cardiovascular Department and the Cardiology Unit at the Papa Giovanni 23rd Hospital in Bergamo, Italy. A warm, warm welcome to you both. Thank you for joining me. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for inviting me. <laughs> My pleasure. Um, let me start off by asking you, Dr. Park, where your country is on the incidence curve of this epidemic. Yes. So, you know, the uh, first of all, and I'm very happy uh, inviting and the uh, uh, at this time, it's a very nice time to share our the recent uh, uh, two months experience of the COVID-19. So uh, first of all, uh, I would like to share my, the, the, you know, Korean cluster. This is a uh, very uh, well summarized uh, uh, our, our Korean status COVID-19. COVID uh, uh, briefly mentioned our first case started in nearly January 20 just one case, 35 years old woman from Wuhan, the, uh, the region in China. So uh, for just one month, we controlled well and we tracked all patients. Within one month, just uh, the, we found the 33 zero case uh, COVID-19, but uh, approximately one month ago, you know, tra tragic event happening and the 31 case, you know, some this patient is uh, you know very important pivotal factor in our outbreak of the COVID uh, nineteen the outbreak in Korea in the thirty one uh, patients contact nearly more than one thousand uh, one hundred sixty contact uh, uh, the special in very you know closed space uh, uh, Jesus Church. Uh, so at this time, the, nobody believed that, you know, how much the, uh, the spread out the COVID-19, we controlled well, uh, the most uh, citizens followed the, you know, national policy, but definitely we believe, or we definitely, we, we can control the COVID-19, but, uh, you know, this developed case, uh, de definitely crazy. So one day news shows the this patient contact more than thousand cases. The, we uh, list, uh, received the list of the, you know, <clears throat> the uh, Shincheonji uh, Jesus Church uh, participant, uh, more than 10,000. After interviewing more than 1,500 uh, the participant complained cough and fever, you know, some, just one day, 900 cases, we found it. Is uh, as, as you know, looking at uh, uh, this is uh, how much important the social distancing, you know, just a right. 30, 31, the patients contact uh, too much patient. So, and uh, you know, the, this is the, the Shincheonji, the church contact person definitely right. occupied more than 60%. 
So you identify a very important uh, point about uh, symptomatic people and what can potentially happen when they uh, attend church services or uh, luncheons, I believe, um, uh, in proximity to other people, uh, the potential to really uh, spread uh, the virus in their communities highlighted in your case here. But I Definitely. think that from what I understand, you were past the peak uh, incidence rate in your country and you were in the down part of the slope. Um, unlike Dr. Seni's case in Italy, which I understand is still on the upturn of the COVID curve. Is that right, Dr. Seni? Uh, actually, we had started just two days ago to see probably a plateau. Uh, hopefully, this will continue a little bit, and then we will have the down, the down line of the cure of the mm -hmm. pandemic. And uh, honestly, I would say that what they did in, in South Korea is truly amazing, truly amazing. I agree. Perhaps I'll use that as a segue to ask uh, Dr. Park about the approach South Korea has taken to mass screening and testing of its population. Yeah, definitely. And, the, you know, the drive through testing first implanted in South Korea, the, uh, up to today, we uh, screened nearly uh, 410,000, uh, you know, the suspected case and uh, finally uh, 9,700 cases are finally confirmed, uh, you know, drive through widespread examination and then early uh, you know, isolation suspected case and uh, also recommend the self quarantine, the suspected contact person, there is most importance to control this disease. And uh, also daily emphasize the uh, taking mask and hand washing is a very essential part also. And uh, we uh, take up the message three and four times per day and the nearby your uh, apartment nearby your hospital and there is new case uh, and then the you know government authority gave uh, the tracking area is that the suspected patient visit and uh, you know some general citizen take care and the which track was uh, the contacted or not wonderful dr seni perhaps you'd like to contrast this with Italy's approach to mass screening and also use of masks by the general population and social distancing versus lockdown? Yeah, I think first of all, I, I should say that Italy is the first time that is facing such a pandemic. We didn't have experience such as a SARS or MERS. And we honestly thought that what happened in the Asia was so far that it couldn't happen right. to us. Right. And it's true. They saw Ebola regarding China. Uh, and so we couldn't expect that uh, these uh, infections so aggressive and uh, that uh, we had to fit. And this is true about considering what happened in Bergamo in which we were in the first line. And if uh, we look at uh, the, the story of this pandemic, started in Italy probably at the end, uh, the last week or two weeks uh, um, before the end of February. And uh, just in one week, we were facing so many patients that were coming to our hospital that uh, we weren't able to manage all the patients. And uh, uh, this is something that uh, different than a tsunami because it's more a tsunami that is prolonged during the time. Up to one month, more than one month, now we start to see the plateau. It's something that uh, never happened in the recent uh, century. Uh, probably, likely, the rest of Italy, we will f face something different in terms of uh, wave. They will face 
something that you, uh, a long wave instead of a so rapid aggressive wave. Probably we gave them time to uh, approach this infection in a standard way, in the best way that we can have. And therefore, uh, we didn't have any uh, total regarding uh, the population screening, for instance, or right. the infection control. And uh, for instance, there is a, a discrepancy in terms of who should decide which population screening, because population screening was left to the regions of Italy. So we have different approach. For instance, in my region, that is the Lombardy, that is the biggest one, 10 million people, they decide to test with the swab only patients that were symptomatic. And in other region, close to us is Veneto, the right part of uh, the booth, is uh, uh, they wanted to spread that, the, the, uh, the screening strategy. Instead right. of, when we look at the infection control, this was a national law. So we have this uh, confusing status, let's say. Right, so you point to the uh, difference in uh, central versus regional control in policy and in implementation and how the lack of a central coordinating body can produce regional variations where uh, you might have different approaches that affect your estimates of infection as well as the mortality rate because the fewer people you screen of course the higher your estimated mortality rate. Um, I'd like to switch gears a little bit and talk about hospital preparedness. You alluded to the fact that on a national level, Italy was not prepared for the pandemic. And of course, it takes its toll on healthcare resources and on frontline health providers who are caught off guard. What about at your local level? Can you comment on the use of personal protective equipment and processes that uh, were put in place to prevent infection among healthcare workers and through that mechanism, prevent nosocomial spread of infection in your hospitals. Dr. Senny, would you like to start? Yeah, um, you know, uh, we designed our hospital was to protect the healthcare personnel, and this was uh, um, for this we decided to close all the non-urgent outpatient visits, close to the uh, procedure, surgical procedure, elective. So we remain just only the uh, urgent, and we test the body temperature. We test. Uh, for symptom or fever that are related to this infection to all the healthcare uh, personnel. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, of course, uh, the PPE, personal protective equipment, were based on the level of the risk of the patient, so suspect, probable, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, confirmed and negative. So, and this uh, is based on uh, the protection level. So this leads to a different protection level. So using right. a type of mask, surgical, uh, FFP2, FFP3 that we use in Europe, NP, NP5, something like that in the United States. So did you follow the World Health Organization guidelines where N95 masks and full protective gear were afforded to those who were uh, in the midst of aerosol generating procedures versus those who were taking care of COVID-19 patients but not producing aerosols? Yeah, exactly. Although I have something to say about the WHO rules. Why don't you say it now? Because it's a matter that affects all of us 
including those of us who have not experienced the surge yet. I think there are learning less that there are learning points that you can share with us from your experience. You know, I think that uh, the WHO uh, rules are adapted for all over the world. So it means, and they specify this book that every country should apply according to their capa capabilities. And therefore, these are good general rule for people, unfortunately, poor pop country, as in, in Africa, for instance. But for someone else, maybe can be upgraded a little bit. <clears throat> so right. therefore, I think that, for instance, in terms of screen, uh, uh, healthcare personal screening, we must, we must protect the healthcare personnel. In my division, we have 12 physicians that were infected, 12 out of 36 in cardiology. Wow, right. So, and right. they make a lot of trouble, of course, problem, because also because the, the length of, of the disease takes three, four weeks to go, to come back to work. So right. it's really how to organize something like that. It's not easy at all. And so it's difficult because you have to cover all the duties, everything in, in, for the patient. The second aspect I would like to stress is the use of the concept of the level of risk. So uh, the, the, the suspect, so the patient, uh, should be uh, very well, um, the, the anamnesis of the patient should be very carefully asked the patient. And sometimes it's not easy because they are truly symptomatic. They don't have relatives or parents beside them. And therefore, in doubt, you should consider them as probable and therefore to use the, the different PPE according like a, uh, a, 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 a confirm patient for COVID and not to wait for because this make a lot of infection in the triage. The triage is, is the key issue to identify the right the patient that can be a risk of having this infection. Right. So err on the side of caution, particularly because patients might not endorse symptoms. And we also know that many patients do not present with typical symptoms exactly. yes. while they are still in the phase where they transmit the virus. Uh, Dr. Park, would you like to jump in and provide your perspective on this issue of personal protective equipment and infection of healthcare workers? Yeah, definitely. And, uh, you know, some, I have, uh, uh, you know, two aspects. The first one is uh, Dr. Sene mentioned and uh, uh, our Asa Medical Center in the largest uh, hospital in Korea and uh, in hospital bed, 2,700, we usually take care of more than 10,000 outpatient clinic. And uh, fortunately, the Seoul is 25 million metropolitan city. The overall number of impacted uh, the patients less than 300 is well controlled. So, you know, as an interview in TCTMD in our Asa Medical Center, biggest hospital, we use the, you know, the more selective use N95 or mask for triage uh, caring doctor or ICU caring doctor for another, you know, the uh, outpatient clinician and they usually take care of the dental, the mask. The region, but uh, the we definitely you know thoroughly the screen the outpatient patient, the inpatient patient for elective surgery case, and we uh, almost all did uh, uh, COVID nineteen examination before any elective surgery and uh, any suspe suspicious symptom or uh, healthcare giver or any patient we do a charge free examination you know widespread examination and the very early speed report of a positive or negative result, we can prevent uh, you know, spread of the uh, COVID-19. As you mentioned, in the world, definitely 
and the many uh, healthcare workers suffer from the lack of shortage of the PPE, personal protection, the equipment. So I think uh, you know, more selective strategy for the frontline doctors take care is uh, PPE wear and some backward doctor like, like outpatient clinic, you know, dental mask, but the very thorough screening would be have some you know, them take or control the need or supply of the PPE. Did your PPE use follow the World Health Organization guidelines or the CDC guidelines, which were a little more stringent at the time? Or did you escalate the use of PPE during the pandemic beyond those recommendations? Yes, so we have very strong the, in our hospital and the infection control authority and the, the step in infection control authority in Asa Medical Center and the daily, you know, uh, gave uh, the strategy. So today, how can you care patient? How can you use PPE? And the, all the employee and the, uh, in our, our hospital try to follow that, uh, you know, strategy. And the, that is uh, definitely adapt to WHO criteria and the CDC criteria. Okay, um, I'd like to talk a little bit about your uh, bed capacity and your ventilator capacity, Dr. Seni, uh, mm -hmm. and how there was a supply demand mismatch, uh, how you have managed it as an organization in terms of resource allocation to patients who need uh, these resources. Yeah, this is a, a central point uh, for facing these infections. Uh, uh, in my hospital, is something like uh, almost 1,000 beds, and 70% uh, of them now are uh, dedicated COVID patients. And therefore, in, uh, in uh, this, we have a move from 46 intensive care beds to 100. Now, actually, today we have 88 patients, COVID positive patients, intubated. And we have uh, in emergency department other five patients. Uh, therefore, every day we are facing this reality of the discrepancy of number of patients that need. to be intubated, intensive care unit available. And for this, uh, we, in some hospitals, they use just the age mm -hmm. for selecting the patient. This is tough situation, is a world medicine, this. I never thought that it would happen just once month ago. Now we are facing this reality, probably in, uh, two weeks, three weeks, probably we, do, we will not have any more this situation. Although we have to keep in mind that all the 60 beds occupied by the patient COVID positive can worsen. And therefore this long, long way for continuous will continue. So we are not at the nadir of the, the wave, because we have, in terms of uh, needs of uh, 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 intensive care beds. So we are using some other criteria, such as comorbidity, apart of the age, the comorbidities uh, and severity of uh, lung disease. And all these, every day we have a waiting list of patients. Right, so you have used age and the uh, probability of survival as a guide to allocate resources. There was an interesting JAMA paper this week about the uh, yeah. ethical concerns and the ethical framework for making these decisions when your demand uh, outweighs your supply. Dr. Park, would you like to comment on yes, so, how you manage you know, the demand mm, on your resources? At yeah, the definitely. I think uh, the, the uh, you know, United States and uh, some of European country definitely this portion is the most important and critical portion, and uh, 
uh, in our nation, an initial outbreak area is a certain eastern part of Daegu, Daegu city at initial time. At the time, the first one day, two day, more than 800 patients, 900 patients, uh, we are crazy, but you know, definitely in Daegu city, in the suffer from acute hospital bed shortage. Initial time and uh, some of the uh, old uh, patients uh, die, they, uh, you know, while they are uh, you know, waiting for hospital admission. At the time, national authority and the regional authority decided to uh, uh, patient uh, the triage strategy. And this, at the time, we divided the confirmed case into four category: the most serious case, less serious case. In the lowest low risk category uh, was a young patient, asymptomatic patient. So, and the young patient, as asymptomatic patient, we send the dormitory, usually rent from the Samsung and LG big company. The usually the young and asymptomatic patient is there mild symptoms, just one or two doctors okay for 100 patient, but. Uh, uh, patient, elderly patient requiring hospitalization in ventilator or ECMO, they transport to, you know, the intensive care unit in a big hospital in Daegu City. And the, if the, that hospital some suffer from shortage of the bed, it transport another region, the region why we control, the, you know, the point specific stratification is controlled the mortality rate as well as uh, overall the disease control. I think uh, this like some risk stratification, one of the key factor to control and the two, uh, you know, the lower the mortality case of fatality rate. Right, I think that uh, the demographic that was most uh, infected uh, in South Korea were young people in their 20s, uh, if I'm not mistaken. And so perhaps the demand for ICU beds was not as high as uh, it has been in Italy, where the uh, age group over 70 has been really uh, burdened with infection. Uh, Dr. Seni, you became infected with the virus and you mentioned that about a third of your division uh, became infected. Tell us about the physical and psychological impact this has had on you and your family. Certainly, we've heard about the number of physicians who have died in Italy, I think in excess of 60 at this point, which is a, a high number. Uh, tell us about uh, how your colleagues and you have coped and uh, some of the concerns you have coming back to work every day. <laughs> yeah. This is a, a stressful situation. Mm -hmm. There are several reasons for this stress in this situation. First of all, because you are fear, fear due to the, 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 your health, your safety. And when you are at home and the risk of to contaminate your family, I did that, honestly. Mm -hmm. All my family was, in, uh, was infected. And therefore, this is something that can happen because stay at home without having any contact with the rest of family is really difficult. Honestly. And then there is, you know, a stressful uh, psychological stress because most of these patients die without seeing their family. They brought them to the emergency department and then they didn't see anymore. Mm -hmm. And this is terrible, terrible. And, uh, you know, you are facing this situation in which every day you feel that you are doing something that uh, is, a, is a part of your job, is a part of your life, and you cannot escape from that. And uh, every day, you feel to be a true doctor. And this is something that I never uh, felt like this in the past. So I think it's something that is, is a truly a situation in which the doctor feel to be something like a, a god in some sense, let's say something like that. Because just with a smile, you can, you can give 
something that is amazing for the patient side, the, the CPAP, for instance. And they cannot talk with you. That uh, is uh, uh, something that is difficult. And for instance, for me, when I was at home, I, I guide my division with web conference, but it's not the same, of course, that to stay at hospital. And um, for instance, for heart transplant patient, patient, for LVAD patient, for everything, we have a pediatric uh, division, uh, unit, a big one. So everything was truly complicated. But uh, what I found, sorry, what I found was that my colleague, as the rest of the other colleagues in the, in the hospital, were truly fantastic. That's wonderful to hear. How about you, Dr. Park? Did uh, uh, you have a high risk know, of infection or rate of infection among your colleagues? Yes, uh, it's, uh, uh, the, it's unfortunately I, I, the, in our hospital, I don't have uh, uh, any uh, the doctor the infected case in, in our nation. Uh, healthcare worker, uh, approximately three zero and uh, infected, but there is no case of uh, mortality, and I think that is the good thing. So, and uh, still, uh, we are very, uh, you know, awareness of the, how much, uh, you know, spreadness of this uh, COVID-19 virus. Definitely, we care for always. Uh, our hospital prohibit any, you know, out of hospital meeting, in the, any participant on other country, you know, definitely, you know, prohibit the, any the personal meeting and keep the social distancing. I think that is very, you know, mental strain, there is very stressful, but uh, we, everybody try to voluntarily keep the, you know, government policy and the hospital policy. Mm -hmm. I think that is the uh, save uh, me as well as uh, save our family and the humanity. Right. When this pandemic is behind us, how are each of you going to remember this period. Dr. Sunny, I'll let you start. Sarah, so, uh, time I told to death. And uh, in, in general, for my life, is going to change the point of view. I understood uh, how much is the difference between what is important and not important. And I learn and learn how much is important the family to stay together. To live with the, to live small uh, moments with them, much more than the past. In the past, in which you know you were in area every day. Now I, I take time, I enjoy the small moment with them. Right, it's amazing so, how these uh, instances uh, give us uh, pause to take stock of our lives and what uh, we consider important and to prioritize how we spend our time. How about you, Dr. Park? Yes, uh, you know, the, I'm very heartbroken. The, every person in the world now suffer from the COVID-19. So uh, approximately one month ago in Daegu area, there was outbreak and the, all cities in South Korea surprised and the, all they're very scared. At the time, we feel the many, many retired doctor and re retired nurse and the volunteer and the firefighter and the, you know, going to the the Daegu area to help anything. You know, I, I'm going to introduce the one interview and the, that was very the amazing, the hot. A broken interview and the 70 year old retired doctor and she was uh, ped pediatrics and 70 year old you know definitely high risk doctor and so and the they uh, he is responsible for driving through examination you know driving through examination is not easy thing vulnerable to you know infection so uh, in the interview and she said to us she said i think uh, this is a uh, uh, last service in my life for patient. So that word, when I heard that, I was very heartbroken. There was a, you know, moving to all Korean citizen is how can you handle this pandemic uh, crisis in Korea? Uh, so the, I would like to emphasize uh, 
to overcome this crisis, every person, every citizen, all authority, you know, take care together. And, the, you know, definitely uh, that is the most important part to overcome this crisis. Wonderful. Well, I would like to thank both of you for your time today and for sharing your experiences, both uh, as individual healthcare providers and also speaking on behalf of your regions and uh, discussing some of your national policies with us. I wish you both well. I'm glad you recovered, Dr. Sunny. I know that our paths will cross again. Um, have uh, a wonderful day and we'll connect another time. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Wonderful. I hope that Dr. Sani recover, fully recovery of uh, your condition and uh, hope to see you in the upcoming, you know, ACC or AH or ESC meeting. Thank you. Thank you for having me. You too. I hope to see you soon. Soon. <laughs> soon. <laughs> Thank Goodbye, you. Wonderful. Bye.